In this lecture, we will be understanding the objectives of what is the reason for using a database um, and not just using a simple file-based system like an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, so we're going to understand the potential problems with lists or file-based type of databases and look at how relational databases can help with avoiding the problems of using simple lists. So I've provided a link um, to an open source textbook um, for you all to refer to and read. Um, and the link is included in the PowerPoint. Um, you wanna take some time to read through this material. I'm going to discuss about it and come back to this, uh, but please make sure to keep this in hand. Um, it's chapter one before the advent of database systems. It gives us good um, information on the need of a relational database and the types of problems it can help us solve. So going back again to review the purpose of a database, the purpose of a database is to keep track of things, um, specifically for an organization from a business perspective, to keep track of things that helps a business run smoothly. So if you think of um, some of the main purposes, it is to organize data um, so that it can be retrieved in an effective manner. We are, of course, storing this data and in retrieving it, it helps us to search about data. Um, databases also help us to enforce security. When we are keeping data, when we are storing data, we want to make sure that it's protected because we have sensitive data. And we also want to make sure that those who only are required to have access to this data are given access to this data. So the main purpose of a database, again, is all of this. It helps us to organize, store, retrieve, search, and to also enforce security. So in order to understand the true purpose of a relational database, we can always ask this question, why not just use a simple list like Excel, like an Excel spreadsheet because it, it's useful for searching, it's useful for tracking, um, we can store data. Uh, so unlike a simple list or a spreadsheet, a database has more ways to organize data. Um, and we're gonna look at some of the properties that helps us understand the importance of databases. To understand that, we're gonna look at some problems that are present in a simple sheet, like if you're keeping track of data in an Excel spreadsheet. So for example here, um, I've given a list here. So if we look at this list, we can see that this list is keeping track of student data. We have student last name, student first name, um, student email, and student phone. So of course, this is a list that's keeping track of student data. So let's move on and see, of course, when we're thinking of students in an um, academic environment, we would need to keep track of many other things that pertain to a student in addition to um, their personal information or demographic information. We would also need to know what courses the student is taking, what who is the instructor, um, what location this course is, um, you know, and so much more other related information. So if we look at this list, we can see that we have expanded this list to add more data to this list that pertains to students. But when we look at this list closely, we can see that um, I have student last name, first name, email, phone, course number, the course name, instructor, and course location. And this is a very small snapshot of the data. But if you look here carefully, we can see, for example, the student Abraham Thomas um, is repeating multiple times in this list uh, because, of course, the same student can take many different courses um, in a particular academic environment. And that's why we're seeing the student repeat multiple times. But if we are thinking in terms of keeping track of the student data, this does present a number of problems when we think about updating this list of data because databases is to keep track of things, but we also have to make sure that we are keeping track of correct data and updated data. So when we look at this list, there are many scenarios that we can think that could change. A student could change their phone number. They could decide to drop out of a course. Or even if you think of a course, for example, the course location could change for you know any kind of reasons that could occur. 
and the course location could get updated after the student register. So when we have changes like this and you have the same data repeating multiple times, um, updating this data can present a number of different challenges because we would have to go to many different locations to update this data and that is prone to error sometimes. So this is some of the problems that are present. So when we think about storing data in an Excel sheet, there are problems when aspects get updated for users when there are changes or when new things get added in here. So if you want to add a new piece of data, like there's a new instructor that comes in and an old instructor leaves and we need to update that instructor information, we would have to go into multiple different locations if there's a change that happens. And that can present us with a lot of different problems when it comes to keeping track of data. So the summary of this is that a simple Excel spreadsheet will present problems when it comes to updates, changes and additions that happen in a business when we are keeping track of data. So let's look at some specific terms or concepts for us to understand in terms of problems that are present in keeping track of data in a simple list. Um, one is data redundancy, and this refers to problems that can occur um, when you're storing the same data in multiple different locations and you're keeping the same copy of it. It could waste storage space and you're duplicating effect um, efforts when you have to go to multiple locations to update this data. So the same example that I talked about, for example, the student Abraham Thomas here appears in three different um, um, you know, records here. But again, this is a very small snapshot of the data. If you think of an actual student database, this could mean many different records. And if there's a simple change, we have to go into these different locations and update it. If not, we might not be sure which is the most accurate record of it. So data redundancy is something that we want to avoid as much as possible. And this refers to keeping track of the same type of data in many different um, records or in different lists because it can present inconsistency issues. And if you go back to the link that I gave you to read about um, in this chapter one, you're going to see that there's also explanations for this in terms of data redundancy. So please make sure that you take time to read through these disadvantages of file-based approaches. And I'm going to go over that again. So if you have looked at data redundancy, Concurrency access is also an important property of databases and what this concurrency means is the ability to allow multiple users to access the same record without affecting the transaction processing. So a good example of that is it, right now, this is an add drop period, even here at GGC, many students are looking at sections, adding and dropping. And this means that multiple students are accessing banner, looking at the same resource at the same time. We wanna make sure that multiple people can see course information at the same time, but also we wanna make sure that the transaction is happening smoothly. So if a student sees a seat that's available, a student can, you know, it's actually available, right? Because multiple students can try to register for a class that has one seat at the same time. So the database system makes sure to lock this process to have concurrency access. And that also brings us to the next concept, which is data isolation. It's a property that determines when and how changes made by one operation becomes visible to the other concurrent um, users. And this is an important concept when you have multiple users accessing the same resource. An example is uh, two students at the same time trying to you know, add or like get into a section that has only one seat. Like if you think about bank accounts, for example, you can have joint users. So multiple people at the same time could try to withdraw amounts of money that could at some point, if you don't take care of it carefully, could cause problems for the business. So again, database ensures that data isolation is maintained when there is concurrency access, when multiple people can access the same resource. Now, think about this. These properties are naturally not available in a simple spreadsheet and in an environment where data is housed and multiple users can access this resource concurrency access, data isolation. These are very, very important properties as well as data integrity. 
So when we are maintaining data in a database, we want to make sure that it's correct and consistent. So consistent means storing data in the same format. So if you think about, for example, data types like dates, for example, social security number, telephone numbers, people can enter this data in many different formats, right? So a database, we can have rules that ensure that data is stored in the same format. So we have a consistent format for date types, um, you know, telephone numbers, social security numbers, so that when we have to search for these types of data that could have multiple formats, we are maintaining a consistent format. So again, this is something that a database system would take care of, whereas a simple list or a file-based system would not be able to control it as much as possible. Um, similarly, security is an additional problem when we are maintaining data. It's very important to make sure we have the right security policies in place. And again, databases are powerful. There are many different um, settings that we can set up in a database management system to control which groups of users have ac access to which types of data. So that's also another important aspect. So again, to summarize, we have talked about some problems that are present in lists that databases can help take care of. So going back again, you can come to this resource and read about data redundancy, isolation, integrity, security problems, and concurrency access to again review what these concepts refer to. Um, so again, to come back and sort of understand the concept of relational databases, let's take a look at the spreadsheet that we were looking at um, that keeps track of student data. So again, we have update, insert, and delete problems in this data set because you have the same data type repeating multiple times. Um, you have the same student listed multiple times. You have the same course listed multiple times. Um, and, you know, information pertaining to instructors that are also listed multiple times. So if we have um, data that is added, inserted, or updated, we can have challenges when it comes to consistency of the data. But let's come back and look at this list here where I'm only keeping track of student data. So here I have the student last name, first name, email, and phone in this particular um, list of data if a student is repeated only once um, and you know information about that student changes we only have to go to this one record so if Abraham Thomas's phone changes we only have to come to this one row here and make that change um, you know so let's go and look at this set of um, list here where I'm only keeping track of the course data. I have my course number, name, instructor, and location. In this particular um, set of data, if the instructor last minute for the course changes or the course location has to change, um, the, co the college administrators only need to come to one location and make that change because we're only keeping track of it in one location. So you might think, how is that possible? That's what we're going to learn about in relational databases. It's called relational databases because we can relate separate lists together. And that's how we can bring this data together. But we keep it separate to avoid update, insert, and delete problems that can happen. So when you look at these two lists individually, there's very less problems when it comes to updates and deletes as opposed to this list where you have the same course where we're keeping track of everything in one list. It's repeating multiple times, but if we break it into separate lists, we do not have that problem. So again, if we compare our slides together, these two slides that we were looking at. The major difference here is that we've broken it into two separate lists, which each list keeping track of a specific theme. So some points for us to note, and we're going to review this and learn this in more details in our upcoming week. If we keep track of a single theme, we do not face the redundancy and isolation problems that we would, as opposed to keeping track of everything. So, the concept of relational databases is to identify the major themes that we want to keep track of and to keep track of it in separate lists. So we break the list into multiple themes. And then what we do is we relate these 
tables or themes. Eventually, we'll learn that we call these tables together. And that's a more effective way to organize this data and yet still pull it together to answer questions. So again, to summarize, in relational databases, we break themes into separate lists. We then relate them together and we call each list as a table, okay? So we are gonna take more time to learn about these concepts further, but this is the foundational concept of relational databases. So again, just to review some of the important things we have talked about as we started by looking at why can't we just have a simple Excel spreadsheet? Why do we need to have a database? So we talked about some specific concepts. Again, make sure to go back and review this in this reading as well. Um, and then we've also tried to understand how relational databases work is to separate these um, themes into multiple lists to avoid these update, insert, and delete problems that can happen. So before we conclude this lecture, um, we're just going to try to take a quick review to think about the concept of data and information. Many of you might have already reviewed this concept in a lower level course that you have learned, but we're going to take some time just to kind of look at it. Data and information, is it the same? Many times we might interchangeably use that, but we have to keep in mind that data refers to raw individual units of um, aspects that we are keeping track of. So examples include date of birth, social security number, first name, last name, account number. These are all examples of data. But when you put this data together and give it meaning, it becomes information. So for example, if I look at student GPA, uh, by calculating from all the grades that a student has taken in a semester, that becomes information. If I go and look at the sales, in a particular business and I total it to say this is the total sales, I'm looking at that data, manipulating it and that becomes information. Other examples, average sales, max, minimum sale, all these are examples of information because we are looking at this data and putting it together to give meaning for that particular data set and it becomes information. So data is more factual information um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say information. D data is more factual aspects. Um, so it's measurements. But on the other hand, when you take this data and give it meaning, it becomes information. So in a relational database, again, uh, we will learn this in a more details as we keep moving on. But we keep track of data in a list which we call a table. And these tables have column names associated with it, which we call as fields. And it also has rows or what we call as records. So these are some basic concepts, but we're going to take time again to learn these in more in depth.